So I'm back doing the electrics after a few days doing other bits. You'll see there's magically insulation in here. And what I've started doing is cutting out some holes for the lighting cabling to run along. The reason that I've doubled up the width of these, so I've just used a standard drill bit and then I've drilled one hole, drilled another hole next to it and just knocked out the middle with the drill bit. The reason I've done that is because we want to have a light switch on either side of the bed that controls the main lights and also a little bedside lamp that's on either side. Because of that I need to have a slightly bigger cable. So I need to have a three core and earth cable where normally you've got your standard one and a half mil two core on earth. I need one and a half mil three core on earth. And that needs to run from the switch here. So a normal that normal cable there, the one and a half mil twin on earth will come up from the consumer unit and run up just through that little hole there, run up through here and there'll be a light switch here. That light switch will then have coming off it three core and earth, so four cables effectively all in one sheathing, three core and earth coming up and in and across, and that can then come down because we're having a two-way light switch with an intermediate. That light switch there can control the lights and its own lamp. That switch over there can control the lights and its own lamp. So the three core and earth is needed for that. The rest of it can then just carry on being normal standard radial of one and a half mil, two core on earth. What I need to do now is notch out or down here, however I want to run it, clip it to there, then I can have one switch on this side and one switch on that side. And all I have to do is, is, is run the cable down to one switch and then run another cable from that switch to the other switch. And that will allow me to control all of the lights. I'll show you as I go. There's a really good tutorial on YouTube which is going to explain it far better than me about how to run a three-way switch because that's, that's what this is. So we'll have one, two, three switches for the lights in this room. I'll post a, it's a really good video, a very good tutorial, very clear. So what I'll do is I'll post a link to that video in the description and you can see what they've done on that one. So I've run the doubled up holes here for the three core and earth. And now what I'm doing is I'm running the actual light here for the two core on earth, the one and a half mil two core on earth. And that will run along here and be the radial, the light will then come out of here. So all the light just comes out of the one switch here, but that switch can effectively be controlled from over there or over there. From here I can then run the cable along and then I can run it across these joists here so I can just notch out on each of these, just one hole all the way along and then I can drop my cabling in where I want it. I have drilled out the holes now all along these beams. I've done them 80 centimeters from the end there of that wood bit. So they're straight the whole way along, all the way down the middle. I originally drilled out these ones here and then wasn't happy with the placing of them. So I've just run some new holes there. So that's 80 centimeters from the edge into the middle. And then I've done the same over here, 80 centimetres from the edge there. And then all I did was find the centre of the room here, so that's two metres. So now the distance between there and there and there and there is the same, because my room is exactly four metres from there to there. So it's a fairly simple way of doing it. You can either split your room in the middle, and run the lights down there and then split that difference or choose an arbitrary number like I did of 80 centimeters in from the middle. The reason that I didn't just split that in the middle and then split it in half again is because those run bang in the middle and I do not want to be notching out the noggins. So I just took it another 20 centimeters and then did the same again on that side. So it was sem semi-arbitrary, there was a reason behind it. But there's no reason why I picked 80 rather than 70, 60, 50, whatever. And like I've said previously, having the lights near the edge is no bad thing. So I'm quite happy. And having them closer to the middle of the room is quite nice as well. So when you first come in the room, straight ahead in the middle there is a row of lights. So I'm quite pleased with that. So all I've done so that I can see where it is that I want to have the lights. I've just notched them out. I was getting so tired and hungry that I just made a ton of mistakes. I had to go and stop and eat some food because... I was just making a complete hash of it. So I started there, then I did one there, then I realised I needed it there. It was a mess. So I've got one there, which is nice and close when you first come in the room. And then I'm going to leave like, two gaps. And then I'm going to have that one there. So you can ignore the one on the right. 
another two gaps and then the third one there. So I've now run the cabling in the hallway landing here. I haven't I haven't cut anything yet, but I've left. That's the radial there. Two down lights and the switch and then the cabling just runs up and neatly in across the top here. And obviously the switch is there. But that cable then runs all the way down to here straight without any any other connections. It's all going to connect. I'm going to put a little connection box down there for everything and then that can all run straight into the consumer unit. I've put a little kink here for the switch which will then power the lights and I'm going to run that cable now. The lighting cabling is in and done. I haven't tacked it in place or anything but you can see where I have left down the loops to terminate for the lights. So I've got three, one, two, three, and then one, two, three. So nine, nine in the bedroom. And then what I've done is I've actually just carried the wire on and I've left a bundle of it here. Two reasons, one, it's good to have some slack on it just in case I've been an umpty, but two, more importantly, I want to actually, this is gonna be a built-in wardrobe here in this alcove space. And what I want is some lighting in here that runs off what's called a PIR, not to be confused with insulation, but it's basically an infrared sensor. So when you open the door, the lights come on. So that, that can run off the lighting cable, but it will have its own LED driver and everything powered that, that will power the lights. But the actual feed for the electricity will still come from the mains there. So I've just left that there in place like that. super dark today so I've rigged up a little motion sensor LED light that's super bright just to help me see what I'm doing and it can spin around because I've just put it on that so I can turn it around wherever I want which is handy. So yesterday I started running some of the wiring for the cable which is good. Amazon Prime saved the day again so I've got the three core on earth now which allows me to do the intermediate. I'm not going to show you the technical explanation in detail for this because A I'm not a qualified electrician and B, there is a much, much better one done by a genius on YouTube called John Ward. He's absolutely brilliant, very, very clear, technically excellent, and a really, really helpful way of figuring out what the concept is for intermediate wiring, radial wiring, circuits, ring circuits, the lot. So I'd strongly encourage you to go to him. I will post a link in the description below, but I'm going to start doing some of this now just running the cables because that way I can then start overboarding with the 20 mil insulation on here and then I can start doing the PIR in there. I'm putting that off because it's a horrible job and I can't really be bothered with it right now. I'm a bit bit kind of insulationed out at the moment so I'm going to do other jobs. I'll probably get that insulation in from the ground once I've done the ring circuit for here. I can do some of the lighting. Let me spin this around. I can do... I've started doing some of the lighting here for the bathroom so I can start drilling drilling the holes and running those cables there. I can tack the cables up because I've got the, the cable clips. So it's going to basically be a day of electrics today, or running them. And as you saw pre earlier, I've run them, I'm running them all just to here. And I'm going to mark with a sharpie which each cable is. Because when you've got three cables running in here plus the three core on earth, it's going to get very confused very quickly. So that's what I'll be doing today and I'll keep you up to speed as I go. So here I've got the three core on earth and the two core on earth. This is one and a half mil. They're both one and a half mil actually for the lights. So this is basically for the intermediate switch and that is the two way switch. I now need to run, well, I will need to run one more cable because you effectively have three because it's there are three switches these two run up and over here and they come down this way one of them comes to the left here one of them comes to the right here and basically allows the switches to be controlled from there and there there'll be one more cable that comes down and controls the light from there while i'm here i have notched out spaces there and there and there and then again another space here and all the way down, I'm going to do another one here, and another one there. This is space for another three core and earth cable, 
which will run all the way from there down under the stairs around and into the consumer unit probably into the lighting circuit and that will power the fire alarm that's a safety regulation stipulation that you have to have a hardwired fire alarm when you do a loft conversion and that's to stop you know people falling asleep and having a fire and the batteries running out and all the rest of it the reason that I'm going to be wiring it into the lighting circuit rather than just having it as a standalone RCD is because if and I turn off any of the trip switches or one of the trip switches trips and say for instance it was the fire alarm that tripped I wouldn't know there'd be no way of me knowing whereas if I wire the fire alarm into the lights and the lighting trips I will know about it because I won't have any lights and I'll go down and I'll see ah the lights have tripped that means my fire alarm is also off so I have to get it sorted so it's just a safety thing I've seen a number of uh, I've seen a number of electricians doing it it seems like a sensible and safe way of making sure that your fire alarm is always hardwired and definitely in the regs don't state one way or the other actually part P doesn't specify so maybe the NIC EIC would say you have to have it as a standalone circuit that's fine but every every electrician I've spoken to has gone well yeah, but if the, if it trips, it's not on and you don't know about it because there's no way of telling. Whereas if it's in your lights, you'll know. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So I've finished with the one and a half mil twin and earth up here now. Run the cable for the switch, which runs there to the first light. It's the one that's cut. That just runs. That will run into the first light. And then you can see I've run the radial all the way round. I ran out of cable so I had to snip it there, but there's a light going to be fitted there anyway. I've run the three core on earth down to the switch and that will be for the extractor fan. And then the rest of it just runs as a normal radial, leaving plenty of length on the cable to enable me to cut and attach them to the lighting, the LEDs. That just runs in and along and down, all the way down there. So that is the lighting done for the bathroom. That's the lighting done for the bedroom. That's the lighting done for the hallway. I just need to add a, add a switch for that. And then I need to run or, or at least leave some spare cable and cover the path for the three core on earth for the fire alarm. Final piece of the puzzle for the lighting here, a little switch cable that goes up and just terminates there, ready to go into that light. So that'll be a hallway light. I'm also going to run one down, down to the landing down here so that it can be, it's a two-way, two-way light. So I'm just gonna run the cable for that. Just thought I'd point out how I'm actually gonna connect this hallway switch here and make it a two-way switch. So what I will do is notch out another hole in here. I'm gonna run a three core on earth cable up and across and over, past here and down, all the way down there. And then it will drop down the wall down there. Now, the reason I'm having to do that route is because I obviously can't go across the floor because that floor will become a staircase and I would need the switch on the wall down at that point there outside the other bedrooms so that as you come up the stairs you've got the switch available to you to turn on and off to control these two lights here. So having the three core on earth just makes it the most simple because the three core terminals go into the common line one and line two and then I can earth the back box which will be recessed into the wall. So because that is a brick wall down there I will have to chase out some of that wall which is going to be messy nothing you can do to avoid that really it is it is part of the job so i'll need to run this three core on earth now all the way up over and down and make sure i leave enough excess on the cable at the bottom so what i'll probably do is run it i'll leave the spool there and i'll run it up back this way and then leave the spool down there so once i've got the clips this will be a lot easier but that there is the three core on earth which runs up across the top here through that little hole up and over down here through there 
and then spools out there and that, allow, that will allow me to run it down chase out the wall and then I'll pocket it down in that gap between there so done that is all the wiring for the lighting up here I just need to run the ring circuit now and I'm done for the electrics <laughs>